I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting, the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I would like to acknowledge my fellow debaters, um, Nick and Asha. Uh, my parliamentary colleagues, David Davis and David Southwick, I don't think there's any others here. Um, uh, Councillor Athanasopoulos, the Mayor, Councillor Hines, Councillor Taylor, and former Councillor Thomas Sowers, who are also in the audience. And thank everybody else in the audience for coming tonight. My name is Sue Pennicue, and I'm one of the five Upper House members uh, members of Parliament representing the Southern Metropolitan Region, which is the ge geographically the smallest and most urbanised of all the state upper house regions. In addition to Bentley, it includes 10 other lower house districts. I'm the group Victorian Marine spokesperson for Education, Justice, Police, Corrections, Arts and Animal Welfare. Our transport, transport spokesperson is Sam Hibbins, the member for Paran, who has released a number of transport initiatives focusing on public transport in the lead up to the state election, including extending Melbourne Metro and planning for Melbourne Metro too. There are more to come, in particular focusing on trams, buses and active transport. I'd also like to thank the MTF for hosting these forums and being such a strong advocate for much needed and better public transport in our community. And I'd like to commend the City of Glenara for its recently released Integrated Transport Strategy 2018 to 2031, which the Mayor is talking about. Uh, and uh, certainly the upgrade of Caulfield Station is an issue uh, that is dear to me and I think I've left some leaflets out there uh, with regard to um, the Greens' position on that uh, station which definitely needs an upgrade. It's the 10th uh, most overcrowded station on the network uh, and uh, as, the, as the Mayor was saying, is the university precinct really there uh, and there's so much opportunity to really um, make that uh, area something special. I especially like the vision statement in the um, Glenara Transport Strategy of creating child-friendly neighbourhoods. If you look around many of our neighbourhoods from the point of view of a child, you would have to say they have not been designed to be child-safe or child-friendly. And that's because they are and have largely been designed around car use, that is to be car-friendly. And I don't think the concept of what is best for children, or for that matter older people, or people with a disability, has always been front of mind when planning and designing our transport system, our road and rail system. The principles espoused in the Grand Glen Ira Transport Strategy, such as providing alternatives to car use, a range of transport options, benefits to health and the environment, efficient peak hour travel, reducing congestion and parking problems, and improving the safety and amenity of our local streets are all values that the Greens share. The Greens transport policy includes, amongst other things, that the transport system must be based on the principles of equity of access, public control of critical transport infrastructure, and reducing the environmental impacts of the transport system. That transport and land use planning must be integrated. It's not in Victoria. Public transport funding should be prioritised above road funding. It's not in Victoria. Road funding way outstrips public transport funding. Public transport agencies such as PTV, Vic Roads and Transport for Victoria must be more transparent and accountable. They are not. We're still trying to get documents about, uh, for example, the Westgate Tunnel, what it's going to cost Victoria, the costs and benefits, the design, etc., and how they arrived at it, and that these are all secret documents. And they shouldn't be. They should be available to the community. Our policies also say that local communities and local governments should be fully participating in transport planning and decision making. Local government plays such an important role in knowing the local transport needs and advocating for their communities, and state governments would do well to listen to them much more than they do. I have lived in the southern metropolitan region, in the city of Glenara, for almost 30 years. I was born in Paran, but I grew up in the western suburbs and I moved back here in 1989. I catch public tra transport regularly. I always go to Parliament by train, and I use public transport to move around about the electorate whenever I can. That's not all the time, but whenever I can. I'm a local and a recreational cycl cyclist. I really like the safe cycling streets part of the transport corridors in the Glen Isle Transport Plan. That's uh, how, well, that's uh, making some streets uh, 
priority for cycling, reducing traffic speeds, redesigning the, the uh, streets, etc. That's how I cycle around my local area. I'm always uh, going along the back streets and along the major roads. Um, having lived in this area for three decades, a lot of the issues that people raise with me about public transport, I, always, I also experience myself such as unreliability of the public transport system, the lack of frequency and overcrowding on trains and trams, particularly in peak hours, and too few mm. services outside of peak hours and on weekends. Increasingly congested roads and extending peak hour times on the roads. Infrequency, unreliability and disconnection of buses to other modes is a huge issue across Melbourne. And I know particularly in the southern parts of Carnegie and Morumbina and in East Bentley. As I said, most of our streets are unsafe for cyclists and pedestrians. We need much better cycling and walking infrastructure, particularly separated cycling paths, but, it, but also the safer cycling streets. And it needs to be made a priority. And we need to look at our cities and our local areas from that point of view, rather than at hitherto how we've looked at it, which is how to build roads for cars. So it's a change in thinking. And how did we get where we are? Well, we're here because of a lack of investment in public transport for decades. Even when it was becoming clear 10 to 15 years ago that more people were using and wanted to use public transport, state governments seemed surprised and were slow to respond. So we have such a huge catch-up task, even to tread water, which is barely where we are now. We are facing big challenges both locally and across Victoria in terms of our transport system. It's way behind where it should be for a modern and growing city and state. And our regional areas need better public transport too. In my inaugural speech back in December 26, I said, we Greens like to ask, will people 50 or 100 years from now thank us for the decisions we are making today? Decisions can cast long shadows. If we had our time again, <laughs> yeah, that's fine again. Perhaps we would not drain all our wetlands. Perhaps we would not build housing estates all over our market gardens. Perhaps we would not have built housing estates and roads over land that have been put aside for future public transport corridors so that we're not in a position where we have a public transport crisis. That was in 2006. We have bigger problems today. The current government has done a bit more than the previous coalition and the previous Brax Labor government, but it's, it's largely ca catch up and there has still been much, very much a business as usual approach, which has been to prioritise massive freeways and toll roads over public transport. We need a comprehensive long-term transport plan that puts the public interest first. As it stands, this state doesn't even have a transport plan, despite this being a requirement under the Act. Other cities around the world, world are transforming themselves and looking, at, and looking how to plan things from the point of view of cycling, point of view of active transport and not always the point of view of roads. And that's happy to take questions as well. Thank you.